Greetings, my dearest audience. This jar, a jar containing a self-sufficient closed ecosystem, is now seven years old. The last you saw of this jar was four years ago, so today we are going to be taking a look at how it's doing now. But first, a bit of history. So, December 10th, 2017, a different time in many ways. I went outside with nothing but a glass jar and a sense of adventure. In a matter of just a few very cold seconds, this jar contained a fragment of a larger ecosystem, becoming a small ecosystem itself. The first organisms visible after a day were all crustaceans. Many sea shrimp or ostracods, a few daphnia and some copepods as well. The sediment was home to these wavy worms called tubifex, which are widely known across the Life in Jars channel as boogie worms. Also in the sediment, and now all over the jar, were bladder snails, one very big and one small one at the start. A large maple leaf was the centerpiece of this young closed ecosystem in a jar. After a week, a flatworm decided to stop hiding and glide around the jar, as well as this little critter. A month after it was made, quite a lot was happening. There was a lot of algae growth, both on the glass as well as on the maple leaf, producing oxygen and sugars and taking up CO2 and nutrients. It was around this time that the Daphnia went extinct in this jar, and we saw a quick appearance of a hydra, predating on the small crustaceans. When the jar was four months old, it experienced its first spring. With longer and warmer days, the algae on the glass grew rapidly. A different, much larger species of ostracod could be seen zooming around the jar in large numbers. The springtime probably triggered their dormant eggs, which were taken with the sediment from the pond to hatch. These triggers were apparently sufficient, even though the eggs were now in a small, airtight glass container on a windowsill in a home. Fascinating, isn't it? The flatworms were increasing in numbers as well. Together with the algae and small ostracods, the bladder snails were a constant presence in this ecosystem. All other organisms had rather unstable population dynamics. The tube effects, for instance, were nowhere to be seen in the months before spring. After seven and a half months, an enormous number of tiny white critters, large microbes that could be seen with the naked eye, appeared. I have no clue what they were exactly. I also saw a few of these organisms, some sort of branching growth form. After a year, it was winter again. The glass became clearer due to a lot of the algae dying or being grazed upon. At this time, the tube effects and flatworms had gone extinct in this ecosystem. The maple leaf, though covered with algae, was still the proud centerpiece. And this channel had 9240 subscribers. If you watching right now are one of those, that's pretty cool. This is what the ecosystem looked like after a little over one and a half years. As it turns out, the flatworms weren't actually extinct at all. There were quite a lot of them at this point. Maybe they remained dormant in the winter months and returning now in summer. This is the jar at two years old. As you can see, the algae on the glass has mostly died and there's quite some thread algae. This winter, however, the flatworms, more specifically planarians, did not lay dormant. Maybe the patterns we're seeing are not caused mainly by seasons, but are more so the result of population dynamics, or predator-prey interactions that show quite extreme fluctuations due to this being a closed and small system, with a limited number of individuals. It's probably a combination of many factors though, as population dynamics usually are. This is what the jar looked like when it was three years old. The glass was crystal clear and the jar was filled with a lush and bright green forest of thread algae. Quite a glorious sight to behold, if you ask me. The ostracods were of course still happy and present, zooming around in their glass encased universe. It was around the three year mark that the maple leaf started to show serious signs of decay for the first time. More and more holes appeared in the leaf and the stalk was slowly disappearing. At this point in this ecosystem's history, it housed the largest number of snails, which might have something to do with the amount of thread algae, also the highest in this ecosystem's history. 
It is very interesting that the highest densities of this ecosystem's most important primary producers, the algae, as well as the most important consumer of that algae, the bladder snails, occurred around the three-year mark of this ecosystem's life, in winter no less. Imagine that, after being closed airtight for three years, suddenly, or well, maybe not actually suddenly, the amount of algae and snails explodes. Why? I don't know kids, you tell me. At this point we saw the rise of a different small ostracod species than the one that was prevalent before. Both small species exist together and the larger species is gone. When this jar was three years old and it experienced its fourth winter, the planarians were there to party. So this was the state of this ecosystem four years ago. Apart from a small feature in the three-year update on the biodiverse ecosphere, this was the last you ever saw of this jar. I haven't filmed it much the last four years, but I'll show you what I have. I have this short clip from when the jar was about five and a half years old. What we can see is that it didn't look much different from two and a half years earlier. The most noticeable thing being that the leaf decayed much further. There's still thread algae and bladder snails, and of course little ostracods as well the same small species that has been dominant from the start. Going forward one year, to mid-spring this year, when the jar was almost six and a half years old, it looked like this. Crawling on top of the sediment, we see a few individuals of the large ostracod species, which has returned. Higher up in the water column, we see smaller ostracods zooming around and munching on some algae. The thread algae was looking a bit thin, but hey, it's just come out of winter. Just a week later, it became a lot sunnier and the algae was looking lush and green again. The ostracod population had completely exploded. All the tiny white things on the glass are large microbes, also present in great numbers. If we take a close look at these ostracods, we can see that they are actually not the same species as the one that were dominant for most of this ecosystem's life. Those were about the same size, but much rounder and with dots on their shell. These guys are actually a bit more pointy towards the base and have a more transparent shell. We saw these for the first time when the jar was three years old. They've been present ever since alongside the other small species. But now it seems that our little rounder species has disappeared, which is quite interesting as it is usually the species that does best in my closed ecosystems in the long run. I'm reluctant to say they are actually extinct because these tiny ecosystems keep throwing surprises at you, but I haven't seen any. So we have a shift in dominant ostracod species after several years. Fascinating. Now let's look at the actual seven year old jar. It doesn't look like much at first, but keep in mind it's winter and we've seen before that this ecosystem becomes less active during winter, sometimes at least. This time, this ecosystem's eighth winter, we do actually see the large ostracod species during winter, although they're very slow, this one at least. Interestingly, we hadn't seen these for a few years at this point, so that's really actually quite crazy. The new dominant small species are still the dominant species half a year later, but their numbers have decreased since summer. Here's some grazing on a dying patch of algae on the glass. This is what remains of the maple leaf after seven years. Just a tiny little mound of dark organic matter. It seems to be overgrown with some sort of biofilm. It actually looks quite pretty in a way. The ostracods seem to be grazing on this biofilm. It kind of looks like they're climbing a tiny mountain. Yay, you did it little buddy. <laughs>
the thread algae isn't looking very um, good but the same thing happened the past few winters and I'm sure it'll bounce back in the summer providing this ecosystem with oxygen and food now look at this I was quite shocked when I saw it and no I'm not talking about these two large ostracods I'm talking about this did you catch that something disappeared I didn't think I would ever say this again while observing and talking about this ecosystem, but after seven years, a new species appeared. This worm. I searched the entire jar and this is the only one I found. There is a slight chance that this is a tubifex worm, just a really weird one, in which case that species returned after years of being absent, which would be quite radical. But I don't think it is a tubifex worm. It really looks like something new, something we haven't seen before in this jar. Obviously, it did not just appear out of nowhere. It must have been in this jar in some form from the very beginning. Maybe it was just there, like it is now, and I somehow never noticed, which is unlikely but not impossible. Or maybe there was some sort of dormant egg or larva or cyst that found this the right environment and time to emerge. Once again, these fascinating little ecosystem in jars have presented us with a little bit of a mystery. Hmm. Here you can nicely see the size difference between the large and small ostracods, by the way. If you look closely, you can see a bit of a shimmering effect going on inside the worm. It's an intriguing little creature. Just look at this. Well, that's got to be a relief. Uh, maybe it is some sort of two effects. It never ceases to amaze me that these tiny closed aquatic ecosystems keep functioning. I mean, seven years. That is a long time for such a tiny ecosystem to persist, not having any contact with the outside world, only receiving light and heat. All the biogeochemic processes that make an ecosystem work have to work here as well, closing the loops and creating a self-sustaining ecosystem. And they do! It's just so cool! I mean, sure, the biodiversity has gone down, but that's not very surprising given that such a tiny ecosystem has very little buffering capacity. Species go extinct more easily and no species can enter the jar. It is sealed airtight after all. And it's subjected to greater temperature fluctuations than larger ecosystems outside of a home. After all, it sits in my windowsill, which does get direct sunlight from time to time, which isn't ideal. Despite all that, this tiny ecosystem in a two liter jar is able to persist for years and years. It isn't just fascinating, but also inspiring. And it fills me with hope, because life keeps going in one way or another. Life is there. Life keeps living. Life, boom, in your face, will persist. And that won't change anytime soon. Wow, easy tiger. It's amazing how much emotions such a two liter jar with just a little bit of water can evoke. Interesting. So, that is the story of the life in this jar. If this jar, the first one I made for Life in Jars, is now seven years old, that means Life in Jars itself is seven years old. And I wanted to quickly ref reflect on these past seven years. So when I made this jar, the first one for the channel, seven years ago, I was still recovering from pneumonia. It was a few weeks before my 17th birthday. Um, I was still in high school and I made videos almost every week and rather quickly actually you guys showed up. The audience, also known as the Jarmy. Um, and in my obviously unbiased opinion, the Life in Jars audience is one of the most wholesome and supportive communities in all of YouTube. 2019 was the best year for life in jars so far with the most timeless classics coming out and as a result a huge search in jarmy members and views and then from mid 2020 to mid 2023 
the number of new videos went down quite a bit. And that is because yours truly was studying biology and also going to prove some personal stuff. Um, but during that time, you guys were very supportive um, and patient. Then in the first half of 2024, we uh, had a lot of new nice videos coming out and a lot of new projects like the Ecosphere Revival, the Darkness Ecosphere, and of course, the Befriending of the Crows, which was a bit of a different direction for the channel, um, but I think it worked out. I enjoyed it a lot myself. And then after the summer, it got quiet again. And well, you guessed it, I started studying again. I am currently pursuing a master's degree in freshwater and marine biology. How fitting. Um, and as it turns out, which I should have known better, but studying and making videos at the same time is really quite difficult. Um, but I am certainly trying. So. Life in Jars is seven years old. It's been a big part of a big part of my life at this point. And I just wanted to thank you guys so much for all your support and very nice comments over the past seven years. Uh, I love you guys and goodbye.